Melbourne's $13 billion Metro Tunnel project is almost done. And it's about to fix one of the city's biggest commuting problems. After years of delays, bottlenecks and overcrowded trains, this major rail upgrade is nearly ready to open. And even though it's called the Metro Tunnel, it's far more than just tunnels. It's a full citywide transformation with new underground stations, advanced signalling and longer high capacity trains. But how do you build twin 9 km tunnels under a busy city? And why will this change the way Melbourne moves? Before we dig into the details, make sure to hop on board and subscribe for more mega projects reshaping cities around the world. Let's start with the basics. The City Loop was built back in the 1980s and it was supposed to take pressure off Flinders Street Station and spread trains out around the CBD. But that was before the city's population exploded. Now Melbourne has over 5 million people and a lot of them depend on trains. Every morning and evening the City Loop turns into a slow moving crowd funnel. Trains back up, which leads to delays and overflowing platforms. It gets quite messy and kind of stressful. The big issue is that the city loop was never designed to handle this many people or this many trains. It has four tunnels and too many lines fighting for a spot. Sunbury, Craigieburn and Upfield are all squeezing through the same old loop, taking turns and causing delays. Meanwhile, Cranbourne and Packingham trains skip the loop entirely, but they still rely on the same central tracks, which are heavily congested. So, what's the fix? Yes, Melbourne Metro Tunnel. It's a full-on new path through the city with two brand new tunnels, each 9 kilometres long. Instead of running every train through the same bottleneck loop, the Metro Tunnel gives the Sunbury, Cranbourne and Packingham lines their own clean path right under the CBD. That frees up space in the City Loop for other lines that are also overloaded. Basically, everything gets a bit of breathing room. This new tunnel adds five major underground stations. Arden, which will boost a whole new part of North Melbourne. Parkville right near the hospitals and university. State Library, up near Melbourne Central. Town Hall, right in the thick of it near Flinders Street. And finally, Anzac, with the first proper tram train interchange at St Kilda Road. Each station was planned to fix real gaps in the current network. For example, there has never been a proper train stop at Parkville. That area sees thousands of students, doctors and staff every day. And yet, there has been no station until now. So yes, the Metro Tunnel is a full-on reset for how the city moves, and not just some fancy upgrade. So, how are they building this tunnel? Building a tunnel under a busy city is not exactly easy. And in Melbourne's case, it meant digging 40 metres underground right through the middle of everything, including under the Yarra River. The whole thing had to slide under the city, the river and tons of buildings without messing anything up. They didn't just grab shovels and hope for the best. This was a massive operation. Four huge tunnel boring machines, each the size of a small building, slowly carved out two 9 kilometer tunnels under the CBD. That took a few years. Then came the real challenge, which was building the stations. Now, three of the new stations, Arden, Parkville and Anzac, were made using the cut and cover method. Basically, dig a hole, build a station and then cover it back up. But it caused some major road closures and some pretty cranky commuters. But the real engineering flex happened at the State Library and Town Hall stations. Those were built using a wild technique called trinocular tunnelling. 
This is where three overlapping underground caverns were built, all carved out beneath Swanston Street. You might be thinking, why so fancy? Because it gave the station's extra-wide platforms and big arched ceilings without shutting down the entire street above. While all this digging was going on, weird things started happening. Like the city's rat problem suddenly increased. Turns out that digging underground literally disturbed the rats, and they started appearing where they weren't invited. Pest control teams were overwhelmed. Meanwhile, over at Parkville, hospitals started raising concerns. The tunnel runs under a bunch of major medical buildings, and some of their equipment is sensitive to electromagnetic interference. If the trains messed with that, it wouldn't just be annoying, it could actually be dangerous. So, engineers had to figure out how to run trains through there without affecting machines like MRI scanners. And then there is Arden Station, which took a very different design route. Instead of just pouring concrete and calling it a day, the architects went full old school. They built a huge entrance made of 15 hand-laid brick arches. Over 100,000 bricks, each placed by hand, to reflect the area's industrial past. You don't see that kind of detail much anymore. But what's the point of spending billions on a tunnel? They could have made it simpler, no? Well, the Metro Tunnel is not just some underground shortcut. Once it's opened, it is going to shift how the entire city works, grows and moves. Let's start with the numbers. Once it opens, this tunnel will allow up to 39,000 more passengers every peak hour. Later, when they roll out 10 car trains, that could go up to 80,000. That means less waiting, less squishing, and way more breathing room on trains. But we're not just talking about commutes. This tunnel is unlocking development. Take Arden. What was once a pretty empty industrial area is now being turned into a new urban precinct. Thanks to that one station, the area is set to welcome 34,000 new residents and create 15,000 jobs. That's the kind of long-term planning that actually changes a city. It also helps everyone else by pulling the Sunbury, Cranbourne and Packingham lines out of the overloaded city loop, there is more room on the rest of the network. So, even if you're not riding through the new tunnel, your train might still come faster. And that's the whole point. This project is for a future version of Melbourne that is bigger and busier. Now the question is how much money was spent because a project this big doesn't come cheap. When the Melbourne Metro Tunnel was first announced in 2015, the estimated cost was around $11 billion. But as with most things this size, that number didn't stay still. Between design upgrades, unexpected challenges and inflation doing its thing, the budget rose to $13.48 billion. But it is also one of the biggest public transport investments in Victoria's history, and it's meant to serve the city for the next 100 years. So, what's the timeline? Construction officially started in 2018, and from then on it was non-stop digging, tunnelling and station building. The tunnels themselves were done by 2021, but stations took longer. Now, the exciting part is after years of drilling, testing and system setup, the Metro Tunnel is scheduled to open in 2025. They had estimated the project to be completed by 2026, but they are one year ahead of schedule. That's right. In a world where most major infrastructure projects run late, this one is actually getting done early. Before opening to the public, the Metro Tunnel had to go through serious trial runs. In just 10 days, test trains made over 2,600 trips and covered more than 35,000 kilometres. That's like circling the planet almost once. Crews clocked 160 hours of testing, checking systems, 
safety features and train performance. They practiced emergencies, platform door failures and even full evacuations. Meanwhile, 46 more drivers were trained to handle the new high-capacity trains, bringing the total to around 200, because take only works if people do too. They are doing everything they can to make this project a success. So, what can you expect to experience once this tunnel is fully functional? First off, trains will run every two to three minutes during peak times. On lines like Sandringham, you will get trains every 10 minutes between peaks. On others like Craigieburn, Upfield and some regional lines, services will run every 20 minutes, even late at night and on weekends. The high capacity metro trains they are using are longer, smoother and can carry over 1100 people each. So you're way more likely to get a seat or at least some breathing room. All five new underground stations come with platform screen doors, which is a first for Melbourne. These doors only open when a train is perfectly lined up, making the platform safer and helping trains leave faster. Travel times across the city will drop too. A trip from Cranbourne to Parkville, for example, will be up to 50 minutes faster during peak hours. This is how you will get your day back. You will also notice bigger station entrances, wide platforms, more lifts and clear signage. Everything was built with future crowds in mind, so when the city grows, the system can handle it. Melbourne's $13 billion metro tunnel is more than just a new train line. It's a complete rethink of how the city moves. With twin underground tunnels, five major new stations, and room for tens of thousands more passengers, it's a massive investment aimed at solving the congestion that's held the system back for decades. In my view, this project is a bold and necessary step. It's not perfect, but it's a kind of long-term infrastructure planning that cities around the world need more of. What do you think? Does this tunnel solve the right problems, or would you have done something differently? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear how you'd improve Melbourne's transit future. And if you're into major construction, architecture, or the projects reshaping how we live and move, make sure to subscribe. There's plenty more on the way. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.